Yeah. They're about to get started. Cody should out looking at the space where his brother would have been. The two of them making their way down the strip. Now the two Porsches on the outside is Essa. On the it's on the inside is Essa. Sorry, on the outside is Jadwat as they go to the first left hander and then back into a sharp right hander. Essa's got the lead. Jadwat has a look down the outside. He's going to try and slot in behind nine. Third place there is Abshmeyer. Cody Shirat getting involved there. Shirat pushes Abshmeyer wide and gives Jadwat a bit of a nudge there. And this is exactly what Essa would have hoped for. Jadwat holding up some of the guys by the looks of things. And Essa... Oh, it, was, it, was it, was it was actually Bashir that, uh, that knocked Jason wide there. He actually took a bit of curb. And then you saw he got the car quite unsettled. And Jason obviously left him the space. Right hander. Yeah, it's, yep. a beautiful, it's a beautiful shot of those corners that you can go side by side through there and you actually then have the advantage. So Cody did that really, really well. Didn't try and uh, squeeze Jason, gave him the space, but he's gone and lost that position now through this technical uh, section. And, and once you get one, make one mistake and get pushed out wide, hard to get your rhythm back through here. Well, we can see that he's losing, losing, yeah. losing positions hand over fist there. Hand over fist. And uh, that is not ideal for the young Shirat brother over there. Now down in fifth position, back in fifth where he started. You know, her brother Jordan, Kelvin, Sheldon, um, you know, these all the names, Jonathan Aberdeen, fantastic. And David Perrell is one of those guys. But also to see the great work that they're doing in the simulation uh, game as well. And, you know, Jordan and, and Kelvin helping uh, Dave as, with his coach Dave business, uh, training people up how to be better at sim racing and obviously one of those experts is selling setups and helping guys getting the car set up the way they want it to perform Good. and there's no one on this grid that can catch a car like he can and make sure that after the catch the car is going as fast as is possible after that slide i assume, so, you, mean by, I assume you mean by catching not catching a car in front but actually catching, no, the, car <laughs> actually the, catching the slide yeah he's because, always in his own race <laughs> yeah, because when it was when we were trying to do some fast uh, qualifying type laps you know you're gonna push and you're gonna make mistakes somewhere and with these cars when the guys make mistakes they often have big consequences and that's what you have to do because it's such a high risk environment at the moment and just if the costs are too high it might be a problem as we see uh, oh. Walken having a look there beautiful move on the, to the outside there Saki on the inside gets it right alongside the portion now seems to have the legs down the straight is Wilkin going to cut across? Is Fasaki going to back down? This is going to be interesting as they go through the right handle. Fasaki backs down. Wilkin gets the line. A solid move from Wilkin there. Can he hold on though to the next right handle? Yes, he does get a little bit of a look Ooh. there. They touch. Stroll runs wide. No, that was very, very naughty. That was Fasaki's fault there big time because, uh, yeah, I gave him a proper little nudge and, and, and knocked him wide. So if I was him, I'd give that position back. Yes. Um, which I'm, I don't think he is. <laughs> I think he's still, <laughs> he's still trying to fight. Oh, it's oh. oh my goodness me, they go across. Walken's no, out. Oh, and Jason and he, gets caught up in the pandemonium as well. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. You're wrong all the time, Mario. <laughs> what do you mean? Just some time. <laughs> yeah, according to Taz, Mario is always wrong. According to Mario, Taz was wrong. That's why you guys do so well together when you argue these incidents. Because as we see, as he gets to this point here, nothing much changes. He has a look down the outside now. But the corners, yeah, he's right along the outside, on the outside. Uh, yep, the closest he's got so far. Is he going to try and tuck it down for turn 11 down the inside? He's going to have a look. Very aggressive stuff then. Aggressive defending from Abschmeyer. Fantastic driving now. The last couple of corners up ahead. Oh, no. Willifan pulls off. Something's gone wrong with Leslie uh, Willifan there. Was, I think that was just to avoid contact. So it's actually very well done there because, you know, Jason's obviously taken the perfect racing line through there. That's a great example of that, uh, the double apex. Um, mm -hmm. And then Jadwad in seconds, Essa winning. But I think that was good by Leslie. I think he realized he's going to run into the back of Jason and put him into a spin, and he just kind of aborted. So I th that, that's what I felt happened there. Abschmeyer doing so well. Abschmeyer doing so well. To yeah, great, great result in, in third. That was a great finish. Pressure with probably like 12 or 15 minutes of, of racing. He was under massive pressure. And uh, and got that got that wrapped up. Well done to Lazy Olafant.
Welcome to Monza and home of the Formula One Italian Grand Prix, but also home of round five of the ATK Pro Series. The game, or the sim, as it's referred to, is of course Assetto Corsa Competizione, one of the most reali realistic simulators in the world. Kailawi Nine Hour, our partner, as well as Motorsport South Africa. And this event would not be possible without our sponsors, AMD, Elgato, and Corsair, providing the technology and Corsair the comfort of those amazing seats to make sure that our drivers, our competitors, our staff, our production team, all make this operation run as smoothly as it does. What a race we've just come from in the Pro-Am category. But the main event of the day is this, the Pro race, which will be happening right now in the next couple of minutes. We'll be joining the guys for the qualifying. And the person in the commentary tower, the virtual commentary tower with me, is someone who no doubt is going to be giving us lots and lots of valuable trivia on this fantastic circuit. Marius, I know you love this circuit. Welcome to the yeah, first. Listen, it's always always great to uh, join you and Jonathan. And if we've got Tasman with us, if she's off the golf course, it's great to have her, her input as well. But... You know, before we just get on to Monza and, and the pro race, it's just a massive, massive weekend for for sim racing. I mean, we've seen everything that's happened with uh, with coronavirus elevating it and real drivers coming to, to play in the simulators world. But to have the virtual 24-hour of Lamar run, I think unbelievable. I know there were some issues, but just unbelievable to see that production. I think what that's done, having sim real together a historic race at an historic track and yeah we are with our series here in south africa um racing at at a circus been around since 1922 is just it's just brilliant so i'm just stoked to be part of part of this atk pro series and and part of sim racing because it's um yeah it's a new frontier for sure for sure and i think we're certainly making history here to be able to do something like this and the person that's helping us make history and the person that's responsible for the technical analysis and uh, handing out some of those fines, Jonathan Benz. That's me. Um, <laughs> you know, um, watching the Pro-Am race now, and, uh, you know, the guys uh, made a really good effort to heed the warnings of lap one, turn one from the driver's briefing. Super impressed with, with how that went. I conveyed that, uh, that information to the pro guys, and I said, guys, you got big shoes to fill now. You know, I don't want to see any nonsense in lap one, turn one. Big penalties will be applied if if there is an offending driver there. I'm glad now, you of course, did. Yeah, now, of course, the the from that race, did we not see that the biggest cause of incident was not drivers diving up the inside or anything. It was drivers clipping those curbs and losing control of their cars and then just collecting guys behind them. So I think... You know, I also, um, in the driver's briefing now for the pro guys, had a conversation with the guys about that. And, you know, there's not a lot that we can do to prevent a guy ahead of us crashing, but it's just something to be aware of that, you know, it's it seems to be the biggest cause of fatalities today. We saw absolute carnage there earlier on with the guys getting taken out, but through no fault of their own, there was a tiny little incident up front. But as Marius mentioned earlier on, the concertini effect takes place. And then you've got yourself an accident. But what is also causing a concertina effect are these times, Mario. Zaire is with a 147.0. And just 1.7 seconds back is your number 33 spot, Michael, in uh, with a 1 minute 48. Unbelievably close racing to look forward to today. Look, that is what you're always going to find. That's the nature of Monza. And, and you, you're never going to find massive gaps between first and last year because it is... Uh, essentially a straight line track but it doesn't always equate to the best racing because of the circuit nature there's going to be some slipstreaming and some overtaking but it, it, for me I, I love i love the nature of the circuit and there's some very technical bits so you've got massive top end the guys are running low downforce but you've got some critical <laughs> turning points like literally stop dead uh chicanes that you you've, you've got in nailed and and that's what we saw in that in that pro-am race you know, you make one little mistake, you outbreak yourself, it ruins your rhythm, it drops you back two or three places. So I think we're going to see a lot more of, of, of the same. That's going to happen in this race for sure. But um, as we spoke to the Pro-Am guys, they weren't really struggling too much in terms of tire wear, which is which is good news. But 
I'm excited though. Jonathan told us last week that with the balance of performance that ACC implements, this is a good track for Mercedes Benz. And, uh, you know, Jason Webby joined the series quite late, but we've seen him running top 10 pace. But in that seeding run, to be sitting with the second fastest time, and we've got Bruno Cudley, who's been really on song in the last couple of rounds. And um, we've got three Mercs in the in the top 10. So that for me says Jonathan spot on in terms of what the game's rewarding. Yet in the prime race, who won it? A Porsche. <laughs> Indeed. Once uh, again, yeah. I think once we're going to yeah, as you were saying, uh, Marius, once again, the uh, Porsches took the top spot earlier on. Um, Marius, uh, you recently spoke to a Ferrari driver. <laughs> Listen, he's going to live off of that forever. I think the highlight of, of his career, David Perrell, uh, such a, such an awesome South African. Um, we know, we, we can be so proud of what our racing drivers are doing uh, on the world stage. And, and David certainly up there with Jordan and Kelvin and Sheldon and Jonathan Aberdeen and Tasman. Um, but also what he's done from a virtual perspective. And this is where he started, you know, karting into into sim racing and has always been a, a pro at promoting simulator racing. And as a giggle started this Coach Dave <laughs> Academy, you know, teaching people how to be better sim racing drivers. And that's obviously really taken off now with, with COVID-19 and the mm -hmm. likes of Jordan and Kelvin are helping him. So we had a chat with him and it was just such a cool moment because... For him, he's had many highlights, but this weekend racing now at the virtual um, 24 of Le Mans, um, a highlight because he actually was a Ferrari team driver, listed, went to Maranello to race live there. But um, he also got to help Charles Leclerc. I mean, Charles is phoning him saying, hey, dude, how do I set up my uh, my car? I can't get it to, you know, he's like, what are you kidding? Is this a, like an April Fool's joke? Really, really cool guy. So this was the chat we had with him. Uh, David, you make us super proud. Um, this is what he said. Good man. You've set up Coach Dave as a as a an online coaching business for sim racing. I mean, that's that's thinking out the box, literally. Yeah, it started as a meme a year ago, just over a year ago. Um, I needed to make some extra money while I wasn't at racetracks because professional racing drivers are paid per day at the track. Um, and I, I had a YouTube channel, which I'd been growing or working on rather, and it was starting to gain some traction over many years. So a lot of patience there. And essentially one of the commenters said, Hey, you should coach guys in sim racing. And I did it as a meme. I did it as a joke. I said, this will never work. I put up a coach day thing on my website. And the next day I got a request and I couldn't believe it. And then it was like one or two a month. And it just eventually grew to this point now where it's myself, Jordan, Kelvin, another guy called Nick Foster, another guy called Dan Wells, who I distribute coaching lessons out to. So how do you help guys from a setup perspective? Because I know that, that seems to be the bit that guys struggle with the most because you can get in that car and have no idea. And that comes from you having real seat time in the real world because a racing driver may be less and less these days. But in the old days, the guys used to actually know a thing or two about the mechanics. <laughs> you, you know, they, they, they weren't just plug and play. On my YouTube channel, I invite my real engineer, Chris, who's also South African, to be my engineer while I'm racing in ACC. People get to have a preview of what a professional driver or how we behave as a, in a relationship and provide feedback for the right things. And a lot of my community uh, gain value from that. The sequence of Barcelona, turn one, two, three, is more important than the individual corners. And if you can understand that, then you can take that lesson to any racetrack you go to. That's the kind of coaching that I put across. And this is it's the same with setups. My, the one team that I race for in real life, Kessel Racing, they picked up on this. They heard one of my YouTube videos with Chris and they contacted me and they said, David, how do we also get involved? And it escalated to the point now when I'm doing an ESRO event, I have not just Chris, I have another six people from Kessel analyzing data if necessary, which for me is quite common, actually protesting an, an incident. Then we do an hour's debrief after each session. So wow. it depends the environment. Yeah, it becomes very serious. And there's, you must see the reports that my engineers write up. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I wish I had that work ethic on the <laughs> documentation side. So in the environment that I'm in, it is very serious because it's not essentially that we are playing a game which is true. And to be honest with you, do the results make the world of difference? 
Well, in my case, yes, and I'll get into why in a moment. But it's also, I have eight guys who stick around for 10 or 15 hours a week preparing for an event. And if I go and crash the car on the first lap because of a stupid move, as opposed to something which isn't my fault, I've wasted their time, like exponentially. And that's a huge disrespect to my team. When I go back to them in real life, like why would those guys respect me anymore? Let's talk Charles Leclerc. I mean, are you sitting and helping Charles yeah. with his setup, getting him into sim racing? I mean, like it's crazy. You wouldn't really have thought that that was going to go down. No, I thought it was a joke when they, someone, <laughs> someone said, it was a guy from Ferrari. He said, Dave, um, Charles watching your stream. Can you help him with setup? And I was like, yeah, haha. And 10 minutes later, I was coaching Charles Leclerc. But what followed on from that is that now I'm racing for Ferrari officially in yeah. virtual Lamar, which I know it's just in the virtual world, but it's a dream come true for me. I, I've, I live and breathe Ferrari since the day I was born. Um, and yes, I race on the customer GT side. Next week, I'll be in Ferrari the whole week. And if you look at the driver roster, I'm only, the only non-factory guy who they brought in and in the pro lineup, which I didn't actually realize. I kind of, it was a blur because there was a lot of shootout phases. I had to beat all of the Formula 2 guys in their academy. Then I had to go up against the real sim guys, which is not easy, and try and earn this drive. Dave, thank you for your time, for, for joining us. Um, super, super cool. And um, I, I think just, you know, we, we've got a great bunch of South Africans that are doing fantastic things globally at racetracks. You're one of them. We've spoken about Kelvin and Jordan and Sheldon and Tasman. Uh, there's so many. But also now in this new frontier of racing, that there's a South African that's at the top of the pile showing the guys the way. It's, it's brilliant. Thanks for your time. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me on, and uh, I appreciate that. Here we go, 175 points for our man Essa over there, just behind him, the ATK athlete Bashir Jadwat with 167, Leslie Oliphant with 145. No surprises then that uh, Essa is on the top spot, but the gap not as big as we you know, thought it might have been, judging from the first couple of races of the season. No, but that's because, I mean, I, I think this is great. So you've got four rounds in the bag. Zaire has won three of the four. And he has got a, what's it, eight-point cap yeah. over Bashir. And I think it's quite clever because they're not awarding massive, there's not a big points haul every time where there's a huge gap between the drivers. So as long as you're consistent, you're scoring points, you're in the game. And I think that is what is so critical here. Yeah. Otherwise, you can have two race wins and it's a runaway, you know, and you never catch the guy again. So I love this. I think we I think we went for a great battle. We said it during the Pro-Ams. Obviously, once this weekend's done, points will get, get updated again. But like there, Kieran Patterson, Pro-Am driver, winner of, uh, of the race earlier today, sitting in 10th place overall. Brilliant. Brilliant to see that. So um, that for me is super exciting. Whether you're racing Pro-Ams or Pros, there's points to be made here. Well, with 12 rounds of the series, we're heading towards the halfway mark next week. And, you know, earlier on, it didn't really matter what the points looked like. But now, you know, this you're starting to get the championship unfolding as we head further down the list here. Some of the guys in Pro-Am scoring some valuable points there. Junior McCall we saw coming in third place. And uh, that Bentley in second position. They're now giving those guys points. And uh, the top 10 from Pro-Am 
getting points, take, taking them through into the championship standings. Yeah, I think, I mean, the, the every Saturday having the seeding runs is critical because there are a lot of guys that are obviously doing great in Pro-Am, but I mean, they're not going to score nearly as many points if they if they can just get themselves into pro they're going to get a, a, a greater points haul so that for me is what every guy should be focusing on every round yeah we had monza this week but in two weeks time we're at nurburgring it's a new race new challenge um new guys we're going to see mixing it up we've been promised that this track is going to ensure that we don't have a porsche victory oh well that didn't really work in programs because it was a porsche that won <laughs> so is saying oh this is terrible for a car we don't have top end we a car that likes to turn well yeah i, I, I just the early pace he showed it could be the usual suspects up at the top but i'd love to see things getting mixed up a little bit with some other guys that have found pace i think jason webb for me is that wild card because he's a real fantastic driver i know you working a lot with him ernest and uh, he has shown massive improvement in the last two rounds i look forward to seeing what he can do and we'll be finding out what jason will do that mercedes benz right after this break are getting comfortable there in your Corsair chairs as we go now on board with Jason Webb in the Mercedes-Benz going into the uh, Ascari section here for the first time or well, second time 16 minutes of qualifying left Jason Webb in the uh, Mercedes-Benz there he's running the custom livery this week we are running custom livery thanks to Jonathan and the guys Jonathan you guys have been working hard on that livery this week haven't you yeah this week we um, we decided we're going to roll out some liveries for some invitational teams so i think we've got about 17 guys who have submitted liveries to run on their cars this week and we're going to um, include more and more as we go forward beautiful man the cars are looking fantastic out there we also heard that some of the guys are trying to uh, slip stream down the straight to try and catch an advantage there are guys that are running teams here can they do that to gain an advantage at the circuit jason their pinpoint accuracy going into the first corner and i've got to say i'm a little bit biased on this one because i have been giving some tips this week marius uh yeah what are your thoughts on jason's improvements i'm not going to say anything i'll let you say it I love you said off uh, off comms earlier you're actually quite nervous about this <laughs> <laughs> For me, for me, it's awesome. You know, at the end of the day, there's no bias with us in terms of our commentary. Um, I just love seeing. I think it's great that we've got a real racing driver. We've got Clint Weston. We know um, we've got we've got guys that are coming. Shaw Wilkin, I mean, Clint Weston, I mean, Um 
we've got now Jason Webb. I mean, SA Drift Champion. It's great having these guys adapting so quickly to the game and coming with real racecraft. And I think once he's got his setup done, which you've been helping him with and, and just learning his way around these tracks and again around the simulator, they are good for the sport here in South Africa. Mm. They've got following, they've got guys on social media that love what they do and it's just going to introduce more and more people to the world of simulation and it's for me super super good and and i think you look at the time that he's running there 47.5 great early pace means that he is right on his tail I mean, he's <laughs> but, uh, yeah i like the fact that you talk about these guys that's the difference when we get into pros we start seeing the guys really do start working together they are running in teams um, and, and they're going to start looking because that's what they do in Formula One here. Yeah, the guys are sitting looking for toes because it's going to make a massive difference to your top end. But it was awesome being on board there through uh, through Ascari. Just pinpoint perfection through there because that exit, you're allowed to run wide. But if you take too much curb on that inside, that is where that big sausage curb is. And we have saw some incidents earlier. The guys put a wheel on that and that launches you off track. So... There are curbs that you can take and there are curbs that you have to avoid here. So uh, that's what makes uh, Anza so so cool. So Zaire has taken pole of 47-1. Oh, unbelievable. Zaire Esso showing his turn of speed there as he parks the car and makes his way to the pits. Another Porsche driver, Jason, Jason Abschmeyer, in fourth place, also showing very early pace in the seeding rounds and someone that you've tipped, Marius, to uh, be someone to watch out for this week. Yeah, again, I mean, like we spoke about Jason, I've spent, uh, Webb, I've spent a lot of time with, with this Jason. I've actually taken him uh, overseas, took him um, to go and hang out with his, his favorite uh, drift champions um, and took him on a proper driving experience with uh, with Goodyear and Volkswagen a few years ago. So I spent a lot of time with him and, and he's, he's, he's a really good driver for real in a race car on a racetrack. And he learned all of that through uh, through simulator racing. So I've always been impressed with his, he's cool. You know, he's a really cool customer. We saw that last weekend dealing with tons of pressure from Leslie Oliphant and just <laughs> just absorbed all of it. So I know he's the guy that's kind of well suited to the heat of battle. So he's, he's always there and thereabouts for me um, for a podium, without a doubt. The kind of pressure he withstood last week was just unbelievable. A masterclass from Jason Abschmeyer as uh, Cadley goes into second position. Jason Webb behind him, that's why in fourth, pushing Jordan Shedder, someone that uh, was showing not the best of pace this weekend, if I'm honest. The Audi's not as fast as they have been previously and now currently running. It's still early days, 12 minutes of qualifying left, but currently running in fifth position and that's kind of been the pattern for uh, oh, the Audi. Just, just as I say that, he goes into second. Just as I say that, he goes into second. And and Jason, I mean Jason went and got back ahead of uh, ahead of Cudley. But you know it's such it's such a cool story. It's great being on board with Cudley through uh, through Ascari there because the the first corner, the left hand end, you can take that curb, but the second left onto the back straight you avoid. And he he did that textbook. It was perfect going through there. And we know the setup on this MG allows it to actually ride those curbs really really well. So. Good pace shown earlier. There's another Merck, Krobler. So we've actually got three Mercs sitting in the, in the top 10 at the moment, which is super exciting. Yeah, the Audis haven't looked to be loving Monza too much, but Jordan had a nightmare last week, not logging in, and obviously would have been sitting in second position in qualifying and ended up not racing at all. So I'm hoping we don't have more of that because we want to see the best sim races on the track to make it a, a super good battle. So... Hopefully he's got his uh, his stuff sorted out, and that's a good lap time. I mean, just point you know, point two off of uh, Zaire. We're in for a good battle. So far, um, Bashir Jan, but in eighth position, quite a long way down. Uncharacteristic for him. Behind him, Charles Wilkins, and the other teammate of Bashir Jan, but Quade Klassen's down in tenth position. The order certainly being shuffled around. Yeah, I do know the Porsches, and we look at the the leaderboard there. The Porsches in eighth, all three to fourteenth. We do know the Porsches are struggling, but one man that certainly is not struggling is Zaire Essa, currently just over one-tenth of a second ahead of Sherrod in the Audi, the Porsche of Essa. I mean, this guy, he is he's good at, he's not only a master at driving these cars, but also a master at setup, because I know for a fact that these Porsches, they're difficult to drive, but at the circuit specifically, it's not easy to set this car up. 
Yeah, I mean, he, we, we know he takes he, he takes his craft very, very seriously. And like I mentioned it earlier when we were chatting before the prime race, to hear how stoked he was with his with his victory last week. I mean, that's what you want. He's a guy that's not blase about it. He takes every single race super, super seriously. Mm. Uh, if you want to, if you want to be cheering local, I mean, you've got to go quite far down the field. You've got Bellingham and Stain, Lambo. Um, and Ferrari in 14th and 15th place, so not not bad showing. Um, I, I'm quite I'm quite happy with that because the Porsches have been knocked way down by the Audi and the Mercs, but good to have those two cars like in our in our top 20 as as well. They're kind of the, the best of the rest because everyone else is Porsche from there. Yeah, the 50,000 Ferrari fans in the stands, they are not going to be too happy about this one. The first of the Ferraris currently, and I'm scrolling way down here in 15th position. Yeah, but, that, but that's what I'm saying. That, that's actually, if you look at it, have a look what's above. So you've got Aldo Bellingham and Marcus Stein. And, well, they was 14th and 15th. They're 15th and 16th now. But above them is all Porsches. So we don't know much about those cars around this track. We knew Merck was going to be quicker. So have a look. Everyone that's above them is Porsche or Merck or an Audi. Um, I mean, take that one lone Audi out. That for me is more a case of Jordan just having exceptional pace. And we've seen that. But there's where the next Audi is, is his brother in 17th. Wow. So that's actually a pretty good showing by uh, by the Lambo and the Ferrari in 15th and 16th, in my opinion. I think that's pretty good going. Look at, uh, this is just unbelievable. Hampson in the Lexus, who's been showing good pace this week and uh, improving extensively down in 20th position, just 1.7 seconds down on yeah. the pole sitting pace. I mean, uh, I'm just gobsmacked. But that's when you realize how precise the circuit is. So the tiniest little area costs you big time. So you might think, oh, 1.7 seconds. It, it, it is close to go 1 to 20. It really, really is. But to close that gap is so difficult. You know, for you at Monza to pull back half a second is massive. <laughs> it, it, it actually really is. Whereas at other circuits, you can actually make that time back pretty easy but Monza because of its nature with the long straights and a couple of technical stop and goes um, it's, it's, that's actually quite a big gap yeah. 8 minutes of qualifying left as we go on board with Hampson now in 20th position in the Lexus he's been working on his craft extensively, he's also did the lap guide for us on the Pro Series uh, uh, um, Instagram page and if you go subscribe to any of our Pro Series platforms, go check out our Pro Series platforms and you could send a chance to win a monster skateboard as well as some incredible headphones. So go check that out. Um, Hampson doing the track guide on our Instagram page. And uh, yeah, he's, do he's doing really, really well in this car. He's able to get this car quite stable and uh, he's able to drive this car without any mistakes. The guys all week have been complaining about this very set of corners coming up here. The Ascari S's as Hampson jigs left. And then right again, grabbing some curve on the left hand on the right hand side, just not not too much. And then running wide there over he's those curves on the wheel there, because he's obviously gone and taken that sausage curve, and, and that's the tricky part because that can really unsettle the car. So it's almost best to kind of leave that alone and rather run super wide on the exit because you can. Um, that is the natural line through there. Then risk getting that car unsettled. But I'm assuming Hampson as well is running with one of what we heard Jonathan talking about, invited with the new liveries. Looks awesome, and it also helps us because if these guys can, I'd love it to stick, choose, stick to it for the season because it also helps us from a commentary perspective because that car immediately becomes noticeable. So uh, I love, I love the paint job he's done on that. Looks really cool. Yeah, and as much as um, you know, it's it's good to see various colors of cars and stuff that's unique. When, when you're a race driver, you're creating a brand for yourself. And um, yeah. it's, it's, it's what sets you apart from your next competitor. Now, Hampson, we're going to know every time we see that green yeah. card, that pattern, that's his brand now. So he's stuck with it. It looks really, really cool. So well done, Jonathan, on that. Because I think it's just, you know, every every race weekend, you know, ATK with this Pro Series is just stepping it up from a professionalism perspective. And I think it's a, it's a product that, you know, People around the world, if they're watching the stream, would be like, "Wow, this is this is well done." So I think the guys involved can be really proud of what you put together. It's really good. ATK, play seriously as we zoom in on Bashir Jad, but currently in sixth position. I never thought I'd say that Bashir, a very very talented sim racer, someone that's been doing for a long time in the Porsche, saying that he's been setting this car up and spending 
a fair amount of time setting the car up. As an accountant, he's very busy. He told me he manages some big hedge funds, so he's got a, a real job that takes a lot of his time. But he said that he will, going forward, spend a lot more time on getting the setup of his car just right. So Nürburgring, I think, is where Bashir Jadwat will have his coming out party. Not that he needs one after getting a win early on in the season, but certainly today it does seem that he's a little bit off his usual pace just now currently outside of the top five. It was quite nice to see him though, because through there, when we were went on board with him through a scar, it was actually quite a nice front shot. And I noticed that he he kind of straddled that sausage curb. So if you're going to hit it, make sure two wheels are one side of it and the other two on the track and the curb's in the middle. Because if you don't do that and you actually hit that curb square on, that's where trouble runs. But he showed the very traditional line through um, the parabolic as well, where you chase the inside straight straight away. Um, like an early apex and let the car run as wide as possible in the exit and then that automatically catapults you towards the pit wall um, and the guys look in real racing you'll know down in Cape Town at Kalani you go close to the wall because you actually get you, you get you get a drag there as well you know you get you get get a good slipstream through that so yeah. God it was actually beautiful going on board and watching him through those through those corners yeah and so uh, oh he runs a little bit wide there and that's exactly what we're talking about in the Porsches Essa collecting the wall on the inside there of the second Lesmo over there as we now go on board with uh, Morgan McCall, the other ATK driver. No harm, no foul though for Essa. It's only qualifying. He's still in first place. Uh, Morgan McCall now in ninth position. His brother just having podiumed in the previous heat. So no pressure then, Morgan. No sure, pressure at all. Power slide through that corner there. He had that, <laughs> he had that perfectly crossed up and balanced through there. It was actually great to see. Just, uh, I know we had that interview we played earlier, um, chatting with um, with David Perrell, but, uh, you know, I had a little bit just to find out how things went because I watched a lot of the race. And he said they ended up 15th after some serious hardware issues, but he reckons their pace and strategy, they were good for a, for a P5. And he was actually helping um, the, the Ferrari team getting their setup right. So they had two teams running from Marinello and that. So, you know, it'd be lovely for him to have given... Um, Given the Ferraris, Marcus Stein, a, a bit of a help in terms of setting up for Monza. Um, so I'm sure more and more guys are going to start having a chat to Dave. I know one or two guys already are and get setups from him. I won't mention who, but um, I think irrespective, disappointed for him to finish in 15th when he knew that they were quicker. But um, yeah. what an opportunity to, I mean, I saw his photograph parking off overlooking, you know, Ferrari. And that's where he's going to go and base himself. It's just um, amazing. I'm not going to say one or two guys because after talking to the guys this weekend, this week, a lot of them are getting David Pedal set up and a lot of them are, are, are they, they use it and then customize it for themselves. Yeah. And to get access to a pro, yeah, to get access to a pro race car driver at this level is just, I mean, it's just insane to think. And and now with sim racing taking off like it is, as you said, the virtual homage is happening this weekend. We are going to see more of an impact. I can believe Penske Racing Team took part. I mean, that's just unbelievable. No, but you know what, what was what was really um, listening to the guys today, speaking to um, to Verts. Um, he, he was saying like because he obviously looks after the Gazoo Racing Toyota, so they don't have there were no LMP1 cars, there only LMP2s at the virtual Lamar. But they were planning on doing a, a practice simulation run anyway before the actual Le Mans in September. And then along came this event. So they said, fantastic. So they worked on a team. But they had the exact same driver lineup, except for Kobayashi, who, who wasn't there. But the way they ran their 7 and 8 car is exactly how they're going to run it at Le Mans. Obviously, they had the sim, two sim drivers in each. But they had their whole setup in Cologne and the engineers, everything. So they ran it as a proper Le Mans simulator race. So you talk about that with David Perrell, giving the guys the basis to work from. He said to me in the interview too, his race engineers are now, we want to get involved this weekend in, in, in the sim race. And they online chatting to him, watching, giving time and hours. That is the level that it's got to. So this is going to filter down to to guys that are starting out. And it's a, it's, it's a beautiful story. And great that a South African is right at the top there, pioneering all of this too, you know? I used to race against uh, um, Pedal many years ago. I think it was 2008 in a similar racing competition. He's been doing it for many years and has always been exceptionally fast. And then translating that now to real world racing and back and forth as shed it. We cut to him now, Jordan, the older brother in the Audi, just one tenth, just a well, under two tenths of a second behind S over there. Nothing has changed so far for the top two. 
But Cuddly there in third position. What a result for him so far. He must be so stoked at the moment. Top Can I have a look? Have a look how close it is. I mean, so it's 0 0.17, 0 0.19, 0 0.29. I mean, it's super, super close to the top. But this is how it ended last week at Paul Ricard. And then we had that little issue where Jordan never never logged in for the race. So I hope we don't have that again because I want to see him starting in second because we know turn one, we heard Jonathan saying, he's given the guy the right right here. Guys, don't go to shoot this up into turn one. And we know things can happen. So we're wrapping up qualifying now with things sitting pretty much as they are but as we saw in the prime race as we go to an ad break things could change when we come back from the ad break so we'll see you guys after this and update our final qualifying positions guys have just completed qualifying and the man at the front of the grid in the Porsche about to start his warm-up lap Zahir Essa has joined us from inside the cockpit to give us some feedback on how that qualifying went an unbelievable performance separating himself from the field by just over a tenth of a second there Zahir Essa how are you feeling thanks I'm feeling a bit nervous for the first corner <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you've got the target, literally the biggest target on the back of that Porsche at the moment. And you've got a whole bunch of arrows facing in your direction. Hey, you know what, Sarah? You, you must feel nervous because I don't believe anything you say anymore. <laughs> what did you tell me last year? Uh, Porsche's not good at Monza, hey? Where are you? Any yeah. Car, any cars in front of you? Uh, let's just see after the race. Then we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, tire wear, no concern, yeah, hey? Uh, a little bit, not as much as the previous tracks, but it's seriously, it's just about surviving lap one, and then I'll take it from there. Okay. Wow, what an attitude to have. That's for sure the case at the moment. Um, you've got the outside line over there. The cars also have radar so that you can detect if there's any sort of incoming situation. Um, that's certainly going to help you going to the first corner, right? Yeah, definitely. So, outside line here, yeah, not ideal, but uh, let's just see how it goes. I just wanna... Okay, well, we're going to lap one and let's see. We're going to let you get back to it, Zahir. Get back to the job of driving. We'll speak to you after the race, sir. Great. Zahir, they're sounding a little bit more focused than normal. And uh, a focused Zahir must be a dangerous Zahir. I'm glad you picked up on that because the first time <laughs> was at Silverstone. And he was like, 
but I thought the guy was making a cup of coffee. Or something. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like quite short. Sure. I love that. This is real. So and, I wasn't the only one that picked that up then. No, and no, you know, when you chat, I mean, I heard the guys who were like Jensen Button. I mean, I chatted to Kelvin. I mean, the guys said that I don't know what it is, but they get more nervous in pole position or in these sort of conditions in the simulators than they do in the real races. And, and I don't know if it's because, yeah, you know, maybe when you're at the track, you can soak in the atmosphere and the crowd. Yeah, you can't. You're sitting, I don't know, in your man cave, in your kitchen, who knows where your sim rig set up. You don't get to feel that vibe. And I think when you feel that, it's part of the, the, the mental setup. And maybe that's why the guys start feeling more and more anxious because you're kind of in a bubble. You yeah. know, you can't, you can't tap into that that energy of the crowd and the buzz on the on the grid, and maybe look at a nice pit girl or twelve. You know, I, I don't know. It's just everyone's got their own pre race setup, but it's well, like that, that's what you're missing. Well, that crowd interaction certainly is a real thing. Certain sports are commencing now without crowds, and the sports guys are saying that it's different. It's very different. But the sim guys, this is the normal for them. No crowds. Zahir is usually the cool customer now. <sighs> I'm not going to say he's frazzled, but certainly focused going into this race. And as I said, I think a focused Zahir is a dangerous Zahir. He's someone that's on a mission here. He's got something to prove. Let's see how he does going in. He certainly has got the pace, that's for sure. You know what he's nervous about? Remember after our race um, last week, he was saying, ah, oh, you know, such a pity. It would have been so nice to have had Jordan there for a good race. He was relieved that Jordan wasn't there because <laughs> we know Jordan's pace. I mean, we saw that point two off. That means nothing now. Jordan's experienced, so he's going to put his car in the right um, magic box. So you're not going to have him too far back. They're going to be door to door going down into turn one. And that is what Zaire is worried about. He said he doesn't want to be on the outside. Not ideal. It's fine because it gives you the inside for the left-hander. But now this is about trusting the drivers around you and looking at the lineup we've got there. These are guys you can trust. These are guys that you've raced with for a long time. And that's always critical whether you're in a simulator or you're on the real racetrack. Well, Jordan certainly has shown that he's got race pace. He's, I mean, just watching him do laps in a race environment, he's absolutely calm, lap after lap after lap, and he's going to need to do that to stick onto the back of Essa. Let's hope Essa doesn't get away and makes this a boring race for us to watch. I'm looking forward to seeing the two of them tussle it out as we make our way now to one of the most iconic corners in motorsport, the famous Parabolica. I'm just loving the fact that I've got two Mercs sitting there in third and fourth position. Jason Webb, Bruno Cudley. Um, yeah, I think that is a great turn up. We know they're going to have good race pace. Um, yeah, this is, a good, this is a good mixed bag. Eh? It's not mm. complete Porsche domination. Fantastic mixed bag. We've got Jonathan in the tower with us here. As always, Jonathan, what are your predictions as we make our way around the last corner before the race starts? Yo, uh, I think we're going to see some... some something from Sherrod there in the Audi. Oh, it's been it's proven a tricky car but I, I think we can see something from him today. Well the nerves certainly are building up and I'm only talking about the commentary tower. The nerves <laughs> certainly are building up here with me right now watching on as we head into the pro race. We've got Essa on the left of your screen over there or left on the track. We've got Sherrod to his right. Behind that we've got Cadley in third position, fourth place, Jason Webb, Bashir Jadwat and Ashmai, the two Porsches in fifth and sixth as they head to the line. As soon as they touch this line, the lights will go out and off they go. The Porsche makes his way down. Uh, Webb has a look down the inside there. Jake's right. to the outside. He's on the outside of the Audi there and Webb slotting into second position, running all the way to the out outside there. What will happen as they make their way in? Oh, we've got an Audi at the back. It looks like Abschmeyer. They're getting onto the dirt. Essa on the inside line. What Jason goes down on the outside through the Essa. Oh! They've made it through so far. Oh, Jason gets contact from one of the cars there. That looks like Sherrod gave him a bit of a nudge there, swings him around, and that is a disastrous end for the Mercedes-Benz as the rest of the field now tries to wake their way through. Okay, that just irritates the living hell out of me because that is race over, fans. I mean, that for me, great start by Jason. Went to the inside, went to the outside, put himself around there. We know you can go around the outside. Got the line blocked off. Um, man, it looks like he's got spun around by, by Sherrod coming out of there. And that, and that irritates me because... I think that was Sherrod there. I think that was Sherrod. It was. It was a black Audi that, yeah. that just turned around there. But the bit that irritates me from a racing perspective, happy days for Zaire, is he's gapped it. Gone. Yeah. 
He's gapped at 1.6 seconds, Nad Sherat, who now has caused himself a problem in second position, 1.6 seconds down. But the man that's benefited the most from this, and one of my favorite drivers in the field, Bashir Jadwat now, just behind the Audi with both two front cars in his sights as he goes over the curbs, touches the sand there. And this is what we are talking about early on. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention to you, uh, Marius, was the fact that at the pace that the Pro-Am guys were running, they were not running at the same pace that the front-running Porsches are running at. So these cars tend to behave differently once you start shaving off another second or two. It's so, on. Yeah, yeah, so the Porsche now, in the hands of Jadwat and in the hands of Essa, are at the absolute ragged edge. And it'll be interesting to see how they behave as uh, Cody gets some pressure there from the other ATK car. That is Klaassen's there pulling up alongside down the main straight, going to the first S bend over there. It's a right-hander, so Cody's going to hopefully cover that inside line. No, he doesn't. Quaid has a look down the inside, and they go through. Uh, we saw that we saw that in Pro Am eh, is that the Porsche doesn't have that straight line speed. They've always said that, but obviously turns really well and the handling is great and has an all round package very, very good. But as we saw they pulled up alongside Cody, couldn't get it done. So that's obviously a little bit concerning because that is what this race is made up of. Being able to get into the toe and then under heavy braking make that move. So yeah, that's um that's obviously concerning for the Porsche drivers at this stage. But uh, I, I'm making a prediction that there's gonna be a little review of what's happened there for for Jordan and and oh, I mean we hope that because that could be a double whammy. Jordan might find he's uh, on the wrong end of the the rule book here with uh, with Jonathan, and then he gets penalised, and then you've got a massive gap down to uh, to Bashir. So yeah, I don't know. That, it's just disappointing. It's, I'll be interested here with Jonathan. As obviously we can't talk about it too much here, as he is one of the stewards in this race. He's gonna have to look at the footage. It, could it have been a racing incident that was a bit of a light touch? And I mean, as you guys know, I've been working with uh, Jason Webb, but it was a light touch in a place where touches can happen. But these guys were warned, so we'll have to wait and see what our man Jonathan has to say about that. No, it's a it's a very tricky one. I'm just looking at the footage now. Um, it it was the lightest of touches, but like you say, the drivers were warned, and oof, I don't know. Jonathan, my, my concern, I mean, I haven't seen it again. It's just what we saw in first view. But the yeah. problem there is, I mean, any any pressure on the back of the car, as you coming on the power, if that guy behind you is coming on the power and, and pushing you, you, you're never going to keep it straight. So, yeah. for a, <laughs> <laughs> That was the most basic, simple explanation, but makes perfect sense. No, for the guy who's SA Drift Champion, he, he's going to be quite happy getting a car tail happy. But, I mean, for him to have spun that car through that, he's coming on the power. So the last thing you need at that particular moment is for some guy just to give you a little nudge on the rear. It's like doing it under braking. You're going to have the same result. Yeah, as Jason Webb uh, wanting to give himself, uh, giving someone else a bit of a nudge, that's Morgan McCauley in the ATK car, getting up close and personal. Now he's trying to carve his way through the field. He certainly does have a pace, top four pace there for him as we go on board now with Quake Classens. And I think we're going to have lots and lots of close racing here. Quake Classens now currently in second position right behind Cody, Jason Abschmeyer, just ahead of him. Listen, I'm also stoked to announce we've got a Ferrari sitting Marcus Stay in the 10th position, which is really good. And Aaron Walker in 12th. I mean, that's great because they were kind of there and thereabouts. Remember, they were lying in 16th, 15th, 16th after qualifying. So that's that's good. And I think this Ferrari is going to run well here, which is which is really nice to see. So that makes me super happy. We know James mm. is super grumpy and he's on a on a big fire up here. I missed that replay. I was busy watching the live action. Yeah. But I no, just had a look at that replay now. Hopefully, we get to see it again, Marius. But uh, oh, oh no! Quaid Classen's in the Classen's in the wall. A massive impact from Quaid Classen's, and that is going to be terminal damage. You will have to head to the pits now. Luckily, he's just one corner away, and uh, whew, you see the action that starts. That, that was getting it wrong. So this this what makes this track so tricky. If you just slightly offline there, you want to go and sit and put that that big um, that big sausage curb between the two wheels. But if you don't, and you slide the offline and you hit that square on, you are in big trouble. It's going to launch the car like it did there, and there's no coming back from that. We've got a full replay of turn one coming up. So, yeah, let's have a look. Maybe Morris is wrong again, but yes, I just don't like seeing a car turned around there. Yeah, I think the problem with that, I, I watched the little replay earlier on, was that um, the car actually got hit by what most of the other guys did well to avoid, uh, but the Mercedes actually got hit further back. And that's on the exit of the corner there. You get spun around and most of the cars avoid to do, do well to avoid. But then, bang, the Lamborghini makes contact. 
Might have done him a bit of a favor there, spins him around and off they go. Yeah, but have a look at have a look at where he's touching him. So he's touching him on the back left bumper on a curve that is left-hander as you're coming on the power. So what mm -hmm. is that going to do? Yeah. It's yeah. going to yeah. over, over-rotate the car. So yeah. to me, that's uh, yeah, th th that's avoidable contact. Yeah. Uh, but Certainly avoidable contact. But uh, again, our steward going to have to have a look at that as Cudley takes some curb there in the Mercedes. And as we said previously, that Mercedes certainly able to take the curb. Cudley, one of the fastest Mercedes drivers here, and the top qualifier for the Mercs, Bruno Cudley, improving hand over fist the last couple of weeks as they go now through the corner that just had its first victim. Uh, oh, man, I think, oh. we're gonna be, I think we're going to be seeing more uh, incidents like Koi Klaassen's one. Yeah, I think it's just so easy to make that mistake because you've got to be so precise. And I think that's what's so difficult about just finding two tenths of a, of a second around here because 90% of the lap is full throttle. So full throttle, full throttle, you can't go any faster than that. So where do you mm. make times? It's those little sections there where you are heavy under braking. You've got to be so precise there. And that's what makes this such a high um, risk and reward track because it's really difficult actually with a simple layout to get a good consistent lap time, lap after lap. So yeah, it's a lot still going to happen with uh, 42 minutes to go. I can't believe this has been eight minutes of racing. It's been a lot of action already. Oh, and more action to come as Cody Sherrod makes contact with Jason Abschmeyer. And Cody putting in consistent lap times. He's got Ferrand right on his tail there in the other Porsche. Uh, Cody working his way up the field very nicely there. And but now in contention. Ernest, see how nice that is, though. I mean, there, you under contact, you contact under braking when the car is braking in a straight line. So, yeah. having have collected that, Jason, as he was turning, that's a big no-no. So, he did well to brake and, and, and not and not come on the power, not try and rotate him. But that, for me, is just, uh, yeah, that's what I didn't like about that first um, that first lap incident because yeah. coming on the power on the exit, leaning on a car, there's, there's just going to be trouble. And but John, exactly. that was under big pressure, yeah? Um, but we know that he can handle the pressure. And just behind that is Wesley Ferrant. Um, and further back is Charles Wilkin there in the green Porsche. So, you know, these are guys with massive experience. Um, so we're in for 40 minutes of, of, of great racing. You mentioned old, uh, old Cudley. So cool to see Bruno. I mean, we, we mentioned it earlier in the program race. You know, he was getting some assistance from Raffaello Marcello, who obviously races for the AMG team in uh, in the Intercontinental GT Challenge and raced at uh, the virtual 24-hour Le Mans, and his team won. So I think Bruno's hoping for uh, some of that to rub off on him today here at Monza. And in an unfortunate, we've now only we've got... Uh, this is just so unfortunate, man. Uh, drive through penalty there for Jordan Sherrod and now we've got two of our top four drivers out of contention. What a pity. Uh, maybe, I mean, if, if, if Jono wants to talk through that when he when he's back on back on comms, it'll be interesting. I know he did put down a, a pretty strict mandate. No incidents in turn one, cause trouble there. It's a drive through. And I know Jordan's going to say, well, because Jason was on the outside line, you know, he wasn't going through the corner at the normal pace. So he actually stopped too much, essentially. Mm. It did look like he was a little bit slow on that exit. Well, he will be because he's on the inside. So he's not on the perfect line. Yeah. But it's still your position and your responsibility as driver behind yeah. not to make that contact because we are in that Constantino effect. So that driver, Jason, on the outside line, is never going to have the same drive out of that corner. He's going to be slower. So you've just got to avoid that and just not make that contact. It's where he made contact on the car and what point in the accelerating phase for Jason that caused all the problems for me. Well, yeah, it is, it's a, it's, it is very unfortunate that, that it has to come to this, but um, um, it's, exactly, it's exactly how you explained it now. Um, Jason was going trying to make a move around the outside of Zaya and and then had to slow down slightly more for the second apex but uh yeah it's unfortunate yeah and as we go on board now with the man that's benefited the most from all of this pandemonium Bashir Janwad has clawed his way up to third position and soon will slot into second place can you believe it the cool calm collected Mr Janwad 80k pro driver is now going to slot into second position let's see if Jordan's going to take that drive through penalty he's got three laps to do it uh, is that correct, Jonathan? Three laps, is, uh, that's the window for him to do that uh, drive through penalty. He's not going to do it this yes. time. Yeah, three laps. He's not going to do it this time. And now he's getting himself into a battle with Bashir, which might not be the wisest move. He, gets, he moves out the way. No, he doesn't. 
No, he doesn't. Is he, he oh. slowing down? Is he slowing down? That was that was uh, uncharacteristic. Yeah, looks like he's slowing down quite a bit there. That was a very uncharacteristic move from Jordan as uh, Bashir gets into second position, maybe just not wanting to fight him now. That might be the move. I think that's the move. I, I, I want to give Jordan a, a big round of applause there because the way I'm reading what just happened there now is a driver that could be seriously annoyed with being mm. issued a drive-through yeah. penalty. Yep. has shown massive maturity to say, listen, I've got to take the drive-through penalty. Why am I holding you up, Bashir? Off you go. You go and chase down Zaire. Let's make a race out of it. I've got a drive-through penalty. Yeah. That's how I'm going to choose to read that. And I'm mm. going to say, well done, Jordan. That's a very mature uh, head on you as a racing driver. Respect. Absolute class there. I mean, these things do happen. The racing, oh, somebody runs wide there. That's one of the Audis. As he gets, that's, is that's that Cody? Cody. Yeah, Cody that's Cody. Cody. And Team Sherat, Sherat, not having, it's Sherat. I need to get not that Sherat. Yeah, yeah. Team Sherat, not having the best day today, that's for sure. And I mean, they've, they've had their problems early on in the season. But uh, maybe Monza might not be the place for them to redeem themselves as Wilkin now gets involved in this tussle as well in the bright neon green portion down in eighth position. It's quite interesting if you remember, Jason was being put under some pressure from Cody. So Cody's obviously, I think, made a mistake before that for him to have dropped further back because there's a nice gap between him and Jason. And Wesley's obviously made the, the most of that opportunity through, I think it was Lesmo 1 where he ran a bit wide. So um, Wesley looks like he's on a charge with some good pace. There's a gap between uh, Jason and Bruno um, up ahead in the Merc that's formed. So Wesley's focus is now getting on the tail end of, uh, of Jason. So it's good to see him back up at the top. He hasn't really been there. Remember a couple of the earlier races he was he was up at the top because we've got Jody, I mean Jordan taking his drive-through penalty. Um, yeah, I listen, it's, it's a of unfortunate for us as, as race fans and commentators because we kind of end up, end up losing two of our top runners in a way. Um, yeah. But that, that is racing and that's the stuff that happens. I think the guys will realize more and more that this isn't a personal thing. It's mm. about, this is, the, this is the rules. And if this was in the real world, that's what would have happened as well. So nothing personal, we're racing. Yeah. And back to the racing we go. Cody Sherrod now getting some, uh, some pressure from Shaw Walken. Someone that's no stranger to applying pressure. Shaw Walken in the neon green Porsche having a look to see if he can gain an extra position running in the top three at Silverstone um, I mean he was he had some early pace early on in the season and still really does have the pace just not able to get into that podium position again but maybe something can transpire here because we've got Abschmeyer, Wesley Front, Cody and Shaw all running line astern from fourth back to seventh position. See, I'm just having a look. Jordan slotted there into uh, 17th place. George Smith just ahead of him in the in the Porsche. Um, yeah, like three and a half seconds up the road. Top. Oh, running super, super wide. Eh? But you, you know, ra rather that, rather yeah, that, you go that. yourself to that curb and get your car all wrong. But, um, you know, I think for Jordan, what he's got to try and look at now is he had that unfortunate incident last weekend where there was he just never logged into the game. So he's lost massive points. What he's got to focus on now is getting as far up the even point. He's got 35 minutes to do it. He's got out and out pace. So expect to see him probably finishing certainly in the top 10 um, because the gap isn't massive. These guys are all kind of follow my leader here, and that's what happens at Monza. So he can find himself just systematically every lap ticking off one person one person person he'll find himself in the top top 10 for sure and someone like him i mean the race craft that he's displayed uh, over the last couple of races can't be discounted as well i mean everybody's prone to make a mistake here and there and the, the two brothers have shown incredible race craft over the last couple of weeks and months so uh, i'm sure he's going to use some of that put some of that to good use as we look on as his younger brother the younger of the brothers getting massive pressure from Shaul Wilkin. Now Shaul Wilkin looks like a man on a mission. Oh, the Audi oh, cuts man. across the curb there, makes a mistake. I don't think there was any contact there. He just made a silly mistake. But you see, that's also, I mean, you, you've if you've watched any Formula One or any race at Monza, you'll see that happens a lot. And that's the right decision to make. So as a driver, you go, ah, oh, I've actually messed up. I've outbraked myself here. Instead of trying to get the car to turn through that corner, you more than likely are going to hit curbs, do damage or spin out rather pull straight the critical thing is that when you do feedback you don't have an advantage because the game exactly. will penalize you for that and so will 
um, the, the clerk of the course in, in, in real racing. So you did, you did the right thing there. You outbreak yourself. That is why those runoffs are there. And all they've done is they've just put um, they've put some bollards to make sure the guys slow down. Because in the old days, it was straight. So if you made a mistake, you just kept your foot planted and you find yourself scoring three or four positions, which you've then got to give back at a later stage. So that was actually well done. Made a mistake and, and did the right thing, taking straight line action. We go on line now with uh, Jason Webb, running in the 1 minute 49s. And as I said, I've been working closely with him. He was able to do 147s quite consistently, 148s even. At, uh, with his race setup, so I suspect he's got some major damage there, and the walking, or at least minor damage, according to the game. So the walking wounded Jason Webb there in eleventh position. Uh, Ernest could also just be remember that he's overtaking. He's, he's he's constantly sitting in traffic now. So that race simulation that he would have been running would have been pretty much in clean air. You know, so he's doing battle. He's fighting his way. If you remember, I think he was down in sixteenth place. And now he's sitting in 11th. So he's going to be for sure a couple of seconds off ultimate pace as he works his way through the, through, the, through the back markers. Yeah. Here we go back on board now with another hard charger. Jody, uh, jo sorry, um, Jordan. Jordan, senior, uh, the older of the two brothers, Jordan, the older of the two brothers there, in 16th posi position on a hard charge, I'm sure. Uh, the red mist is real when it comes to these kind of situations, eh? No, but, he, but he's, he's doing well, because like I said to you, George Smith was ahead of him by three seconds. So in two laps, he's closed down three seconds, he's got past um, George Smith, and he's opened up a gap of a second and a half. That, that tells you the out-and-out -out pace that he has. So all he's got to do is just get on with it. He's going to very, very easily make the top 10 at, uh, at the end of uh, this Monza race. But it is just keeping your nose and not, not falling over any of these guys ahead of you that you know are running slower times than you. you just got to be systematic in terms of how you get past them. It's the same for Jason Webber. Well, the uh, young Morgan McCall under an extreme amount of pressure now from Jason Webb. The ATK driver now having to contend with the charging Mercedes-Benz behind him. He takes the outside line. Jason somewhere on the just behind him, maybe get that on the inside. No, Morgan covers the line there just behind Stain in the Ferrari, the first of the Ferraris. And nice to see a Ferrari on home turf in the top 10, ninth position there. Now Marcus is driving really, really well. Because like I said to you, I think earlier they were qualifying like 15th and 16th, and now he's sitting up in, in ninth and showing good pace. So well done, good driving by Marcus, but a great battle unfolding here. You know, the, the, the thing is, as you get closer to the front, it becomes more and more difficult to overtake because the guys are running better pace, you know what I mean? So you, know, you end up getting to that point where, okay, hang on, I've made up three or four places very quickly and then you get stuck. Uh, and that's that's the challenge, to keep your calm in that situation and yeah. uh, make sure your moves are precise. And chatting with uh, with David Perrell, that's what you're saying as well, the overtake, because of whatever parameters are set up in the game, you know, you've got to be, oh, great move, Morgan. Beautiful move there. On Marcus Stain, well done. On Q, as we're on board with you, he's obviously setting that up and he's brought Jason along with him. So, shame, poor old Marcus, as I'm raving about how well he's doing, just went and lost two places. And that happens so often here at Monza. But, and running wide, Jason, whoa. This oh, Marcus did well to avoid. Marcus did very well to avoid the Jason Webb keeping the car on the black stuff and Morgan McCall, well, that was really a picture perfect overtake, wasn't no, it? Was that, that was brilliant. So it was so nicely, nicely done. But yeah, David was saying you've just got to be so precise when you do overtake um, in the simulation is that you can get away with more stuff in the, in, in the real world. Like, yeah, you mm -hmm. overtake, it can't be a 50-50. It's got to be clean. Um, so yeah, that's um, that was good to see. That was clean racing, clean overtaking, nothing that Jonathan has to worry about. Oh, thankfully, Jonathan. We're not yeah, jeez. <laughs> not any, anything more to you there, Jonathan? Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, oh man, I don't know. Are we going <laughs> to... Jonathan, <laughs> you're at the loss for words. I've never heard you at the loss for words yet. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, there's been some great racing so far. And, you know, as much as we've uh, been disappointed by turn one there, you know, the, the impact was quite focused. So, um, yeah. as in who in the field was impacted. So, um, is, we're going to be treated, however, to an excellent uh, fight back from Webb. That's exactly what's happening now as we go on board with Leslie Oliphant, someone that has also been showing exceptional pace now. He's getting uh, some pressure from one of the Audis over there. Oh, that's Cody. So Cody's made a few mistakes and he's on a bit of a comeback charge as well. You know, Leslie, for me, 
has been fairly quiet in this race. It's the first time we're mentioning his name, whereas he's provided us with some amazing racing in the last two rounds. Remember in Zunfurt, he was involved with Quake Classen. Yes. Last weekend, he was with Jason Upsmeyer. Um, so he's a guy that's had a really consistent pace. And where he's sitting in seventh, kind of we're used to seeing him around the fifth or sixth. This is a mistake. Where's someone's, he off, someone's off. Yeah, that, that's Wesley Ferrant, I think, that's gone and made that mistake. I'm sure it is. Um, and that's going to get dropped him way back. I'm sure that's Wesley's car. We'll have a look at comes into view now. Yes, you're right. Wesley for our drops right. back now. He was sitting on the back of Jason. He was in fifth. So that's gifted that position to Shaw. And I remember not too long ago, Shaw Wilkin was sitting in ninth place. Yeah. And he's gone and found himself now sitting in fifth. So he's happy days with that. I wonder what Wesley did there. Big mistake. But and no mistake from Zahir Essa. I mean, legendary up front. Five, nearly six seconds ahead. Zahir Essa running a solid pace there. 148. Six that last lap, and now currently doing yeah one point eight point six that that last lap. Zahir is in the lead by five point eight seconds from Bashir Jabbar. We go through the first corner, then he's going to grab some curb on both sides using absolute maximum load there. I mean, this is as fast as anybody is going to go around the circuit, and uh, Zahir is really right up there with some of the best in the world. For, for sure, but I mean, it's, it's so nice when you went on board there, it gave you the idea of what that curb looks like. So there's a bit of curb that you can use, and then they put that big sausage on top of the curb. And that is that margin. So it, it's so easy. We're talking millimeters here, where you just run a little bit wider, and instead of hitting that curb perfectly, you end up connecting the sausage, and yeah. that knocks you offline. And that is what is so critical. Some of the corners have it, others don't. So you've got to know where you can take that risk, and that's like... I've mentioned this a few times now, when the drivers come to the circuit, they do the track walk, so they can actually see what that looks like. For the simulator drivers, they've got to see that by trial and error, um, again, what happens if I hit it at this angle? Whereas if you've been to the track and you've walked it and you've seen it, you kind of go, mm, no, no, if I'm slightly off margin, yeah, I'm in big trouble. Do I straighten the car or do I carry on turning? You know, that's the sort of stuff that they'll be assessing on a track walk. Well, someone that certainly isn't scared of those curbs is Bruno Cadley in the number three position now. And someone that also quietly has been sitting in third place. What a result so far for him. If he can keep this up, he's got that spot on the podium. And I'm sure Bruno Cadley will be ecstatic about that. The Merc running absolutely flawlessly all weekend and uh, with a fantastic third place qualifying. As we now cut to Wesley Ferrand, who made that mistake early on. Do you remember when we started? It feels like ages ago. Round one, Kyle Army. Who was the winner of the amateur race? It was uh, it was Bruno Cudley, wasn't it? Or, I'm I sure. Think, it was. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, and you have a look at you have it's 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 unbelievable how far he has come, the improvement that he's made. Now, obviously, at first race, maybe he didn't do the seeding run, so he was automatically put into amateurs. We thought that was probably the case, but even then, you know, he's got a leapfrog from pro am and he's into pros and he's just been really the man for me to watch the last couple of uh, last couple yeah, of rankings. each round he's been working his way up the field for sure and something to keep in mind as well the mercedes drivers this is the round that the mercedes drivers need to maximize points because they're not going to get gifted these points again in the coming tracks so yeah. so this that's also what makes it really heartbreaking for webb because he was also set for great points and i mean he's still going to get pretty pretty good points where he's at now but this is the this is the round where the drivers really need to maximize their or the merc drivers specifically need to maximize their points correct that is something we spoke about in the run-up to this event uh because of the balance of performance because of the, the nature of the characteristics of each car the, the mercedes was supposed to be the trump card in the deck for this track or at least monza was supposed to be the trump card for it uh, but unfortunately now, the, the, as the events transpired, you know, he's all the way back down the grid. But at least one Mercedes so far in the top three as we cut down further down the field in the 20th position. And the battles have not eased up because these guys are fighting for real. Yeah, this is what I love with this. I mean, yeah, we're concentrating on the guys up at the top of the field, but right the way through, you've got 33 cars. And for me, that is the joy of motor racing, is as long as you've got somebody to go door to door with, you're in a race. And it's, uh, it's brilliant to see because you've got Isherwood there at the back in the Bentley, obviously looking like he's got some new colors as well. It's a purple Bentley this time, so that's nice to see. And De Kock in the Porsche is kind of leading all of that. Leon LaRue's in there as well in the Aston. So it's a nice mix of manufacturers. Good to see that racing too. But just 
going on what you, you know, I just think like you heartbreak for Jason. This is the psychology that a lot of people miss with, with motorsport. If you think you put in the hard work and, and Ernest, you know, Jason's been putting in the hours now, um, getting it get around how the sim thing works. Um, last weekend also no fault of his own running great pace gets collected in that incident with uh, with uh, Shaw Wilkin and Arno Fasaki you know mm. not his fault ends up way down not scoring the points he should have this week unbelievable qualifying ends up in a in an incident that ends up costing him way down and that really mucks with your head because it's like come on can mother can nature just give me a chance here why are the racing gods against me and that's what you've got to go through sometimes sometimes your car just ends up in the wrong position uh, on the track but for him with his vast experience in the real world with motorsport he'll understand that and bounce back but it is it mucks with your head it really dents your confidence yeah the psychology of motorsport is a very real thing he's now behind morgan McCall. Who uh, he's just not able to get past. Maybe the two of them are charging to try and catch some of the guys in front. Wesley Ferrand just ahead, 3.5 seconds ahead of Morgan McCaw. But uh, looks like Jason has now slotted in behind the older of the two McCaw brothers. And uh, not much else happening for him. Now, he hasn't made any more positions up since then. But at least a top 10 finish does look like it's on the cards now. Yeah, it's, it, that's what I said to you earlier. You know, you come charging through the field, but then when you get to like the top ten, this is where the guys are all running very similar pace to to your own. And, and and who knows? You know, maybe Jason's been pushing really hard in the fight act, so maybe he's worked his tires a little bit hard. There's still 22 minutes to go, so we'll start seeing that coming into play now. Um, I'm looking down at Jordan Sherrod as well. He's also kind of closing down, but it's it's not happening as as quickly. So he should probably still make the top ten, but. This is where it starts getting difficult because the guys that all have race craft, they're all putting together consistently good laps. So you've just got to keep the pressure on. Look at that curb. So, oh, and he's, he's, he's nudged him. Was that a nudge? Yeah. Oh, he's waiting for him. Yeah, so it must have been a nudge or not. Okay. <laughs> uh, it definitely looked like a nudge because it felt like we were on his nose cam. So yeah. I don't think you're going to get that proper feeling. He's going to give the position back for sure. So yeah, yeah we're so well done Jason let him back past so hopefully yeah I don't know Jonathan have, have a look but I think he's given the position back and it's like sorry but but I think they're both they're yeah lost. absolutely no they haven't no they're fine look at yeah, this we, yeah, yeah we'll, so so in a situation like this it will depend like I won't make a ruling on this um, in the race now this is this will depend on the drivers if they feel we're uh, wronged and then a post-race incident uh, report be filed, but yeah. I don't see I don't see either of those drivers um, complaining about that. Yeah, it was, and he, he did the he did the right thing. So that's always a it's a it's a big lesson, you know. That's you you outbreak yourself, you make a bit of a mistake, and and, and funny that that's what ended up the same place as what happened to him. <laughs> you know, it was coming out of coming out of uh, retifilio. So uh, yeah, <laughs> a bit of. Anyway, he knows what he knows what that feels like. But uh, on board with Bernard King in that in that Lexus, and look, just up ahead is that blacked out there. We've got a view of it now. Jordan Sherrod, so he was just behind him. So he's still on a charge up into 13th place now. And um, Byron Walker in the Ferrari is is his next victim. But have a look, Jason. This is looking good right on the back of uh, of Morgan McCall now. Now this is where he's got to get this pass done. Now, this is our replay below of what happened earlier. Let's hope we don't have a replay in the real world because then it's just going to be a replay of a replay. The, the Porsche has surprising pace here down the straight, doesn't it? The Porsche has surprising pace. Today. We've got Jason on the outside now. He's on the outside. The Porsche covers the line. Jason well, ducks on the inside. He's going to try and get... He's gonna, yeah. Oof, it's close. Yeah. That was good driving, eh? Because yeah. he, he tried to line up the undercut there but just couldn't get on the power. So... This is this is good racing by Morgan. Well done, and, and by Jason there. So great to see. Morgan yeah, Jason. Jason is probably um, nursing a bit of damage. Um, he hasn't had time to pit and repair the car, so I suspect he's he's nursing at the car. But I think so. I think so. Based on the pace, as I said earlier, I know that he's got some traffic, but we were able to get one forty sevens in. Oh, he goes down the outside here. That was a bit close there. But close, Morgan McCall doing exceptionally well to absorb this pressure. The young driver there with a karting background uh, in 10th position, showing no issues here 
racing up front. The only issue he had was getting nudged from behind and through no fault of his own. So more than four, really doing well to absorb this kind of pressure. It looked like he stopped him up a little bit early or Jason outbraked himself there, but I mean, it well to avoid contact. It just looked like he didn't expect the Porsche to stop so hard. And, and that seemed like what happened uh, coming out of that first chicane as well. He's got way better pace than Morgan here, but I think just to try and get the pass down is what's proving to be to be really difficult. So it'll be interesting to see how Morgan knows what to do. Coming out of uh, Parabolica is just to obviously go to the inside, go defensive. Um, I wonder what Jason's going to do here. He can have a look around the outside, but sure, it's going to be tricky. <laughs> he goes around the outside. That's asking a lot, though. The line is very long. There. He's going to duck back down the inside. He's got the, drag. He's got the drag now, though, because he actually got good exit speed out of here. So have a look. He should get the pass done now because I think his drive out of that corner was way better. I think there might be damage. He pulls up alongside. We've seen this before. Will the outcome be any different now on lap number 17 as they make their way into lap number 18? On the outside is the Mercedes-Benz McCall with fantastic racecraft there. Fantastic stuff. Morgan McCall. Class What's surprising me, though, is that that Porsche is not getting penalized for being completely off the racing line. If you look at his line through the, the, the left hand, but yeah, Jason's got him here now. If he stays on this position, he's, he's got the move done. So that's great racing by Jason. Oh, but uh, Morgan's got the inside for the next corner here. Morgan not backing out at all, using all the available space there and not touching, even touching the curbs there. Wow, I didn't think Morgan had this kind of racecraft in him, but certainly does prove to sh uh, goes to show that uh, a little bit of karting experience, in his case, a lot of karting experience, goes a long way. Yeah, but you know what? I, what I'm finding surprising though is that you, you saw uh, that I kind of got stopped mid thought there when they went for the next move, but that car is completely off of line into the left hand of that first chicane. So Jason's going for the undercut. He's coming on the power. He should easily drive right past yeah. that car, and and it's not happening. Which for me is like, huh? What is going yeah. on? Because it's a, it's a perfect, he's lined that move up perfectly. And the Mercedes does have the pace on the straights over the Porsche. The Porsches are known to be slow on the straight, so it's really quite surprising he's just not able to get past. Maybe the answer is to hang back behind Morgan and not battle it out for the next 20 laps. Well, uh, just well the problem is, have a look who's, who's coming into play. A little bit further back, you had a glimpse of a very blacked out Audi. That's Jordan. Oh, my so, God. Uh, yeah. he, He's five seconds back, so this little battle is certainly going to be certainly going to be helping him. Um, yes. oh, he's, he's holding further back here. Maybe he's going to try and do the move into um, into the second S's and not the first. I don't know. Oh, and that's yes. Cody and Wesley having a good battle. Mm. Cody side by side. Cody hugs the inside. Wesley on the outside. Wesley's got the run out the corner, but the looks of things, they touch side by side now, running up to the left hand S's. Cody's got the line, but Wesley does seem to have the pace as they make their way around that long, long right hander. And will the Porsche go defensive as they go into the second S's here? Yeah, the Audi has another look down the inside, letting him know that he's there. And well done to uh, Wesley Ferrante. there. Unbelievable. So the Audi has another look there. And uh, yeah. Wow, the racing continues there, guys. The racing so, continues. It's so frustrating when a guy just choose. he doesn't choose. He just puts himself in the middle. You know, Wesley didn't do any luck. <laughs> he just parked his car in the middle. And like that for me is also annoying. I'd love to just give him a little high, little tap to say no before the breaking point. But yeah, that's also quite naughty because he's definitely moving around, coming into that braking zone. But we know Wesley had great pace. He made that big mistake that's cost him. So he's on a bit of a comeback charge. But yeah, like if we see that again on a replay, I hate seeing that kind of no man's land position of your car. Um, you've got to choose. Hmm. Well, Cody Shirat, Shirat now chasing down Ferrant uh, again. And has to have another look now. The gap a little bit big this time as they go into Parabolica for the 19th time going into lap 20 still 15 minutes of racing left so plenty time and this is the battle for seventh position with leslie oliphant quite a far way down the road and sean wilkin looks like sean wilkin and leslie oliphant also having the battle further up so we're, we're now entering the twilight zone this is normally where chaos tends to go wrong in the track remember how much drama we've had, we've had everywhere in the game oh in the right. too um, so I'm expecting much more of the same to come. But the battle with Jason Webb and Morgan is not relenting. And they're in the back. <laughs> um, that is uh, Jordan on a massive charge. But have a look. He's completely offline. Okay, oh, that's oh, 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 no, McCall. No, you Again. see, no, no, that's naughty. And Jordan goes and picks up the pieces. That corner, Jason Webb is going to absolutely hate. 
now Morgan needs to do the right thing and give that position back and give it back fast. Otherwise, that's a penalty for sure. Because that's just, you outbreak yourself, you make a mistake through the chicane, you still try and hold on to that chicane, you end up taking out the driver in front of you. Great driving two laps before, terrible driving there. Unbelievable stuff. And uh, the man that gets the shortest end of today's stick, certainly. I don't know if you guys know the award in rallying for... Uh, it's usually for the guy that comes last or the bad luck award. It's, like, it's called the Wooded Spoon Award. And certainly Jason getting that one today for just unfortunately getting involved in some of the most bizarre incidents. No, in that the first corner no, over there. The wooden spoon that's needed is a wooden spoon on Morgan's butt because that was actually <laughs> very, very naughty there. It's totally, totally avoidable. He made the mistake. And like we said earlier, guys make mistakes under braking there. Then you've got a straight line that you can and keep yourself yeah. up yeah. other than back the position. But he's done neither. He hasn't even given back the position yet, so that's yeah, big no-no. That certainly would have been the move there to go straight over the chicane. And that's why those chicanes exist for exactly that reason. So if you do make a mistake, it's possible to go into uh, straight over it. As we now cut to the man all the way down the road, 10 seconds, 10.649 seconds in the lead is Zaire Issa having completed 20 laps. He's got 13 minutes of racing to go. The lights blaring there, the exhaust popping some flames as he goes through the second set of Issa's with absolute precision. I mean, just look at that, curb to curb. And look at that, using the entire road there as he goes through the first of the Lesmo corners. Yeah, it's beautiful to watch. What I'm also noticing, I will uh, keep an eye on it, it stayed around the 1.5, 1.6 seconds, is a gap between Bashir Jadwad in second and Bruno Cudley. Um, mm. Interesting to see if that Merck can uh, can close that down because that's certainly a battle to to potentially watch. Uh, Jason further back, uh, unless something happens up ahead, no no back-to-back -back podiums there. Um, Charles Wilkin in fifth, which is great as well. But yeah, I'm expecting that we're going to see some uh, some red signs on this board for uh, for Morgan. Um, it's just a pity because I mean it's been such a lack of battle to watch, and they were showing some good race craft. So just a pity that it ended like that. But I um, think there'll, there'll be some. I definitely think there'll be some changes in the order as uh, Bashir award. Jadwan loses another second, or just at least sorry, it was two tenths of a second to uh, Essa. And Cudley might be on the charge. Uh, that, that gap's been the same. So I just want to watch it. It's been 1.5 for the last couple of it's 1.5, 1.6. So there hasn't been much movement. But I'm interested to see if that if that does come down. Did you have a look? Um, uh, a penalty has been awarded. 15 seconds added to uh, Morgan. Ooh, so, um, yeah. that, that's unfortunate. It looks like he's given the position back to Jason too. I'm, I'm hoping. Or did Jason have to pass him? But he's ahead of him on track now finally. So... Yeah, Jason can try and push to get into uh, get into the top ten. Marcus Stain in that Ferrari in ninth place, so that's looking good. But he's got a hard charging Jordan and uh, Jason coming along with him for the ride. Yeah, this is our third place man here, Bruno Cadley in the Mercedes Benz, 1.6 seconds, and as you said, rightly so early on, the gap pretty much the same. He can see the Porsche up ahead. That's Bashir Jabba, but Bashir is no stranger to pressure and no stranger to winning races so a second place finish for him would be good and i'm sure he's used to having a guy 1.5 1.6 seconds behind him and then just holding that gap of course it's a too far down the road now for there to be any sort of meaningful impact or any sort of meaningful reason for him to be pushing too hard as they make their way through the second loop. Yeah. every time we've spoken to him that's what he loves to do he loves to get out front so he can manage the the race pace and um, that's what every racing driver wants to do so yeah, he'll be stoked. He'll be managing his race now. Um, nobody to even worry about in the mirrors. But certainly for Bashir, he'll be he'll be enjoying this because he's been kept honest here by Bruno. You know, he knows it's the slightest little error and, and Bruno's suddenly right there. Um, but I'm also having a look. It looks like Charles Wilkin is, is closing up on, on Jason Abschmeyer. There you can see him in the background. Can't miss that Lumo green Porsche. So that's another battle to watch unfold with... Uh, 10 minutes to go in uh, in this race. And Charles Wilkin, no stranger to tight racing, no stranger to combat on the racetrack. And I'm sure he's got his eyes set on a potential fourth place as we go back to the battle. And these two guys continue to battle it out. We've got an 80 grade driver, Morgan McCall, still fighting for position with Jason Webb. He's got his 15 second penalty. So I think he's just going to enjoy himself for the rest of this race and maybe take this position back from Jason in the same time. Yeah, well, that's what he's got to try and do. He's got to try and get as far up, up the field as possible. Because if you have a look, 
he's definitely going to end up losing three places at this stage because Heineke, King and Walker are all within the 15 seconds. So um, potentially he's going to finish there in uh, in 16th place. So he doesn't want that. So he'd love to get past Jason and try and uh, try and chase down um, Jordan. But yeah, I don't think that's happening. I think for me, the Merck just seemed to be the quicker package. He was just struggling to get past Morgan, who was showing some good race craft, except for that one little moment. Yeah, Morgan, of course, having a look there in the, in the 80K car. Uh, of course, now running the custom livery there. Jonathan making sure the guys are able to do that. Both these cars running custom uh, sticker jobs over there. And of course, 80K Pro Series hosted by 80K, but made possible by Elgato Corsair. And of course, AMD powering this event. And what an event it is. I mean, this is, it's so engaging. It's so... This, it's just unbelievable to watch. We're watching racing during a pandemic. Just amazing. Yeah, it's just like we said right in the beginning of this of this broadcast. It's been a massive weekend for some racing with that 24-hour virtual Le Mans. I mean, anyone who is everyone was involved in uh, in that race, and not just from a driver perspective, but actual teams that were involved. You know, and yeah, we switched to what we're doing from a South African perspective with ATK, and it's it's brilliant to watch. And I mean, Monza traditionally can be quite a boring circuit. But for me, it's, it's been good battles throughout because you kept honest the whole time. Everyone's in with a shout with the car just in front. Yeah, we were George Smith, who's sitting a little bit further back, but just there ahead of him, within a second, is, is Byron Walker in the Ferrari. There's a battle, and just ahead is Bernard King and Alexis. So there's always somebody for you to focus on, and, and that's what I that's what I love with the setup at Monza. It, it can be a bit follow my follow my leader, but there's always opportunities. Well, it certainly is follow my leader, but the, the, the pressure that the guys have to withstand is constant. It's not a case of there's always a guy trying to dive on you or always a bunch of overtakes happening. But look at this. We've seen these guys nose to tail, line of stone for the last 10 laps. You know, every lap after lap after lap, they've got to be concerned about somebody trying to make a move as McCall makes a move easy. Down the inside makes it look easy. Definitely damage on the Mercedes. The Mercedes is the faster car, at least supposed to be on that straight but Morgan McCall makes the overtake look easy as Jason starts to fall way back now and McCall starts to get away. Jeez, I, don't, I, don't, I don't actually don't know what happened there. I mean, Jason looked like he just either missed the brake marker completely because he was on the brakes way too early and he seems to have backed out of this completely. So I don't know what, I don't know what's going on there. We'll have a chat to him post-race. So we've got some yeah. uh, feedback. I, 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 yeah, I suspect that he'll... Uh... He knows he knows Morgan's got the 15 seconds, so he's not in the same battle with Morgan right now. There's no point in risking uh, the rest of the race. Yeah, I, well done, well done, John. It's actually a good. That's a good spot. I think that might be the case. I mean, now's the time to be head down and do the fastest possible lap. And Morgan himself on a bit of a charge. So if Morgan can catch up to one of the cars in front, all right, but yeah, of course he's got that 15 second penalty. Yeah, he's going to try and make up time now to try and negate that penalty. You see, I've just, uh, uh, Jonathan, well done. I think you've actually summed it up perfectly because I'm having like we're six minutes left. Jason realizes he's not going to get onto the back of Jordan who's five seconds ahead of him. So that that's kind of where he's finishing. He's finishing mm -hmm. in the 11th position, whether he likes it or not. Yeah. Yeah, what a pity the target for him was top five. 11th is not going to do it. Someone that also, I'm sure, had a target and then uh, became the target of some... Uh, of an investigation by our man Jonathan over here in 10th position uh, a decent charge from him coming from way way down the grid yeah I just think he's running out of time I mean I said he'd make the top 10 he's literally just made it but I think Mark is staying in line in that uh, Sol Ferrari well done mate. that's brilliant um, I think he's got enough uh, he's got a he's got a good enough gap there I don't think there's enough time for Jordan to chase him down but Jordan will probably want to try and prove me wrong but that's but that's a great result if you have a look we've got a, a lone Merck in our in our top 10 we should have had two and then obviously the the Audis Jordan certainly out of position with that drive-through penalty that he was given um but that's a great showing by that Ferrari because I think we literally would have had less Porsches sitting in that mid-pack with uh, the two Audis and uh, and um the the Mercs just not being where they should have been Bruno Cudley going over those curbs there in a Mercedes-Benz. The gap now still pretty much 1.5 seconds to Bashir Jadwat. So, as you said, Marius, that gap staying constant. Bashir absorbing that pressure. And Bruno, who I would imagine now would not be the time to 
go on a charge and try and get that second position. He knows the skill and experience that Bash brings to this race. And uh, the wise move now would be more than likely just to be happy with the podium finish. His first one for the season, no less. Yeah, listen, make, make no mistake. He's been on a charge and trying. And I think he's just realized after 20 minutes of a 1.5 second gap, you realize that, yeah, you, you are clocking the same time as a guy in front of you going nowhere. So, yeah, I think this is pretty much how it's going to end for him. And it's a great result. I mean, we know he's been on the podium in amateurs, but I mean, that literally doesn't count. Uh, this is a massive result for him in the pros. I mean, this is going to be a good points haul. Uh, Jason, I've smiled, obviously consistent again, and he's sitting there in, in the fourth. And that's, and as we said earlier, you know, as long as you are sitting in like the top five, top 10 every time, you, you're picking up good points every single time. And there's not a huge disparity between first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. You know, there's maybe two points in it. So as long as you're consistent, at the end of this 12 round um, series, you're going to be there and thereabouts. And I think it's going to make for some good racing when we get to like round nine or 10, when the guys start thinking some, hey, there's some strategy going on here. Well, we were saying the gap stayed the same, and now that gap dropped a little bit to 1.3 seconds. Yeah, not enough time, man. I just don't. I think Bashir would have to make a bit of a, a bit of a mistake here for it's less than a second now. It's less than a second now, Marius. Maybe he did make a mistake, but hmm. as uh, Bruno pushing a little bit wide, there, he's obviously trying to get the hammer down now. As we go into the last couple of laps, the man in front, Zahir Issa, is the person that dictates how many more laps they do. And the gap, 0.9 seconds. I'm going to be watching that gap like a hawk now to see if Bruno Cadley can be the man to close that gap and beat the seemingly, usually, unflustered, uh, the, the guy that remains unflustered, uh, Bashir Jabba. He's so calm there, the gap's back up to 1.1. Bashir probably just put his foot down a little bit further and extended that gap to 1.1. Just made a little mistake, but I mean, just going yeah. parabolic and looking at that gap and looking at two minutes left, you know, he wasn't going to get a proper toe down here. He wasn't going to be putting Bash under any pressure into um, into the first chicane, into Retifilio. So you know, I wasn't, you know, I don't think he's too stressed. I think he's got this under under control, but mm -hmm. make, no, make no doubt about it. He's being kept honest here. He's like, you know, it's a, a big mistake and he's losing second place, which he, he wouldn't want. No, certainly not at this stage of the game with just two minutes remaining, two minutes of racing to go as we go through the second S's. They're now going to the first of the right-hand Lesmo corners. And just watch how tight this Mercedes-Benz tucks in up alongside that wall there, running a little bit wide this time, actually. We've got some traffic up ahead here. That's all the other portion of the right-hand side. Moving and, out, uh, which is good. Lots of blue, um, lots of blue flags. These guys are on a charge. The eye in the sky capturing all the action. And of course, the action would not be possible without our sponsors, Course Air, Algato, and of course, AMD powering the PC that I'm watching the action on right now, actually. I'm and you, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, ATK. And, yeah. uh, and of course, <laughs> today we've also got a giveaway. Uh, we've got a skateboard and an incredibly awesome set of head headsets. I need to get, get it right. It's a monster skateboard, and by that, it's a monster energy drink skateboard. So that's yes. pretty, that's pretty yes. cool. And that's I find when I skate with that board, I get monster airs. So that's, mm -hmm. that's always good news. I'm jealous. I want to get myself some of that Astro Gaming headset uh, gear, the 18 headset. I need a proper USB headset over here. So I think I'm going to get hold of one of those. But if any of you guys want to get hold of one of those yourself, all you've got to do is go to the Pro Series pages on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, YouTube as well. If you want to enter, you've got to be over 13 and based oh, in South Africa. What's going on here? This is Marcus Stein. Stein all over the back of Wesley Ferrante. Got it wrong into the Parabolica. So there's a lap to go. Sure, man. Marcus has a great shot at getting up into eighth position. Wesley, remember how much pace he had early on? He made that mistake. But um, it looks like, I don't know if the tires are gone. Oh, you've got Ooh. the wrong. Marcus, I would always want to be on the inside there, but looks like he made a bit of a wrong move. I don't know why I'd want to try and go around the outside, but put your car there and you've got it done. I don't... Perfect. perfect. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Drama continues as one of the Audis comes back here. That's Jordan. And Jordan overtakes the Ferrari. Jordan, the beneficiary of that little incident there. I, I'm, I'm sorry. So that for me is a massive penalty to Wesley Ferrant because he missed the chicane. Um, he went straight across the curbs and he went and parked his car in the middle of the track. So what he should have done is got out of the way completely. So he's gone and sacrificed and ruined the line for Marcus Stein, which has gifted 
jawed in those positions. So that for me again is something that that needs to be reviewed. If you've made a mistake and you've lost that corner, you then can't go and ramp straight over the curbs like he did. You then need to straight line it. But by him doing that, he's gone and impacted on Marcus, who's now gone and obviously lost a position down to 10. So that's that's naughty. No, no nonsense being taken from Marius over here. And I'm sure no nonsense getting taken from uh, Jonathan. But the man that is the man of the moment, that is Zahir Essa across the line. 28 laps done and dusted. First place goes to Zahir Essa again. And the cool, calm and collected Bashir Jadwat gets second. But the man of the moment for me, Bruno Kadli in third place, putting a Mercedes on the podium for the first time. Jason Abschmer happy to get fourth. Charles Wilkin in fifth position. What's going on here? This is the battle for ninth place of the year. Oh, oh. You know, like that's just that is just so silly. I mean, I'm glad he ended up where he ended up because putting his nose involved in another instant. Wow. Okay, let's not let's not talk about the negatives down there. But Jordan, good. <laughs> we'll drive. talk about it tomorrow night, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan gifted some positions, but my man is Marcus in that Ferrari. Brilliant. He shouldn't have been in ninth. He should have been in eighth. Um, but yeah, there was some great flipping racing. But Zaire Issa, unbelievable. Well done. And you're right, Bruno Cadley looking super, super good. Um, I just would have loved to have seen Jason. I think he would have been higher up as well than the 11th, but he hated turn one. Yeah, for sure, turn one having its fair share of victims. And we'll be talking about that right after this break. Let me in my zone, let me, let me in my zone, let me, And we are back with the results and two familiar faces on the top spot there. But one that uh, might be familiar for the guys from the amateur division, even in the pro-ams, but certainly not usually on the top spot. My driver of the day, Bruno Cadley, gets third place in the Merc and the first driver to put a Mercedes on the podium. As I said, I was working with Jason Webb. I was hoping he would do better. But Bruno Cadley, a man on a mission, third position unbelievable stuff i'm super happy for him yeah that is brilliant and then obviously bashir jadwad in second super consistent and zahir got his wish you know survived turn one <laughs> <laughs> after that it was kind of tickets goodbye cheers and again great racing i'm sure he's going to be super stoked with that because it looked like a a good rhythm and it's a track that deserves and rewards rhythm in a driver and he was he was untouchable brilliant well, rhythm is exactly what he brought to the to the to the table today 10 seconds plus the lead at the end unheard of especially over someone like bashir who is has got epic pace on this uh, in, on any circuit really uh, and to win that so convincingly i think he's going to take with him to a from a track where he wasn't supposed to do well in a car that he wasn't supposed to do it well with, the confidence he's going into the Nurburgring with is going to be through the roof. Where, where did, I'm trying to remember, where did Bruno finish last week? Can anyone remember? Otherwise, we'll ask him. Hopefully, we'll get him in a post-race interview because I'm I'm sure we spoke to him. Did we not speak to him last week? So, I'm sure he's, I mean, he, he's, he's certainly, we've known in the last couple of weeks, he's been like around fifth and sixth place. Getting yeah, he got fifth last week. 
they are getting quicker and quicker every single every single week and we know this was a strong track i think we did speak to him last week though and he was really looking forward to to coming here because like we know it's a it's a great circuit monda is for the mercedes-benz with the balance of performance they will be happy with that um bruno uh, apparently you you are joining us online um bruno how are you doing bud you're right Bruno just joined now, Marius. You had a question for our man, Bruno, our third place man. Bruno, can we just get this right? Uh, is it Cadillac? It's Bruno Cadillac. 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 Guys, I've remixed my name. I don't know how many times, but, <laughs> no, but it's all good. <laughs> but you know what? Let, let's let's sort it out <laughs> once, once and for all because we were told it's Cadillac. Now we finally get to hear from you. Say it for me, please. Bruno Cadillac. But it's wait, we, we had it right at the beginning. What yes, the heck? Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> right at the beginning. You <laughs> fed us incorrect in Kadile. Because we were going yeah. to like, I mean, I'm sure you'd love a cuddle right now because that's a great... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind a cuddle <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah. great Bruno, well, well done. Listen, you knew coming to Monza that this was going to be a strong uh, strong track for the car. But I mean, irrespective, it seems like whatever whatever circuit you add at the moment in that Merc, you've got it very well dialed in. You must be super stoked with the podium. Yeah, I'm over the moon. Um, I gave it my best, obviously. But uh, I just think the guys that are in front of me are extracting the absolute maximum out of their cars. And that's why they're just too good at every track. But the Merc was going to be strong, yeah. I had high hopes and I, I gave it everything. Um, but just not enough on the day. But I'm super stoked to be on the podium. I mean, it's I've come a long way and uh, really, really happy. Just correct us in case we've been saying other things wrong. Um, have, have you been working with uh, with Raffaello Marcello in terms of setup <laughs> on your car? Sorry, Bruno, I had to, I had to say. It, man. <laughs> so what actually happened there? Um, the SRO did a series um, with the real life drivers, and yeah. um, uh, ACC is quite a tough game to get used to. And I was on the forums and I was reading the messages and I saw the guys needed a bit of help on what to do in ACC, how do they build up the speed. So I just reached out to Raffaello and he said, you know, no problem, send me your setups, wow. let's do some practicing. Wow. And, um, you know, I just told him in the game, you got to improve like your track rating, your safety rating. And um, yeah, we had a lot of fun together. I learned from him, he learned from me, but I was more more giving him advice on what Mercedes does, what you got to be aware of, how to set up the car, and um, obviously getting to know the guy. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. He's a he's a cool Great. dude. I mean, we we chatted with him um, at at the Carlo Minano last year. Hell of a cool guy. And if you are chatting to him, you can congratulate him because his team won the virtual twenty four hour of Le Mans today. I don't know if you're aware of that. You might have been in in game mode focus for today's race. But yeah, that that's what's cool with uh, with what we're seeing at the moment is real virtual everyone coming together and helping each other because it's a tough car. You're not running twenty nineteen spec here. Yeah, it's not an easy car to set up. And by the way, I was watching his race earlier and what an awesome event that was to watch. And to see him win, it's just fantastic. That's gonna that's gonna boost his career a lot. But yeah, the Mercedes is tricky. It's it's a, it's a hard car to be fast in and it takes a lot of time to to get right. But uh yeah, I'm just gonna keep on trying my best. Well Are you fast Sorry, Marius. Well, fourth, you certainly have been. I mean, you got fifth at the last race. My driver of the day today to get third in that match. Just unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just just an unbelievable drive. Marius, you got any closing words there for our man? No, I was just going to say, hopefully you and Jason are going to be uh, working together because I think that, that's what we need is, is you know, he's got real race uh, experience as well. And you obviously massive in the, in the sim side of things. And to have two Mercs putting uh, the guys up top under pressure, let's work together. Got a lot of rounds left. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Jason Webb, shout out to you, man. I know you're a legend. Let's 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 get in touch and let's take the fight to the Porsches. Let's go. <laughs> the gauntlet has been laid down. The gauntlet has been laid down by Bruno Cadley over there. Kadile. Kadile. <laughs> we said it right the first time. Bashir Jadwan, as we said, in second position there, and Zahir is in first. Bashir, a constant gap behind uh, uh sorry a constant gap ahead of bruno but uh Issa just in a class of his own today uh just unbelievable but the man we we're talking about a second ago our second place man bashir bashir we've been chatting all week about your car and how you've been setting it up but every marius pointed this out earlier every week you guys say the porsche is terrible and every week you guys are on the podium what's going on uh this this was pure luck i never expected <laughs> to be anywhere near there um, yeah, I hadn't I hadn't done any uh, 
proper race prep because I've got a massive migraine from yesterday. Mm. So yeah, this was my first uh, long stint in the car, and I'm I'm bloody surprised that I made it to the podium. To be honest with you, um, I thought I, I thought uh, Bruno would catch me at the end. I was giving it everything just to keep ahead, but uh, yeah, I just got lucky and. Yeah, the first corner incident helped me a lot. Um, I was able to get a clear run through. So without that, I, it would have been very different, I think. I, I personally think you're just being too modest, to be honest 100%. with you. Marius, what do you think? 100%. I mean, you know, I, I, lo I love your modesty, Bash, but I mean, that was fantastic, fantastic driving. And we were monitoring that gap. I know we thought Bruno would close down, but I mean, you kept that at 1.5. It's only the last two laps that... That, that gap came down a little bit but great race and you know that's what happens in racing there's you had a front row seat to that incident obviously a drive-through penalty for jordan um and that's how it goes sometimes you know when you're on form and you're consistent um, lady luck favors you so you took that opportunity and scored great points again and it's consistency that wins championships so well done bash Sure. Thanks, Marius. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the results but i'm not happy with my consistency i think i could have uh I was a lot inconsistent throughout that race, so my pace would fluctuate from within a second, which is not good enough at this <laughs> at this level. That, so yeah, is that not Monza though? Sorry, is that not Monza? I mean, that is what's so tricky about Monza is that yeah, I mean, you're 90% full throttle on a lap, but when you're not on full throttle, you've got to be so precise because there's some corners you can take curb, but take a little bit too much and you hit the sausage, and then there's trouble. You know, you've got to be yeah, so precise. <laughs> These curves are absolute nightmares, I tell you. I think um, I spend more time going sideways through the exit of Ascari than going straight. So, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, we saw that. And to lose it in these Porsches is so, so, so easy. So, well done to you for not losing it. Well done for you for holding on to second place. And I know you didn't put as much time as you would have liked going up to this. So, I look forward to see what you can do at the next round at the Melbourne Prix. Thanks, Anastia. Yeah, I'll give my best for the next one. Hopefully, I have more time. <laughs> As you can see there on the screen, we've got Zahir Issa with 45 points and Bashir collecting 42. I really do, I really do like this point system. It allows for the guys to not run away with the championship. But someone that ran away with this race, Zahir Issa, more than 10 seconds. How? How did you do it? Uh, I gotta thank my lucky stars. I don't know. <laughs> it was just unbelievable luck that I get through turn one and I see a crash behind me and it's just like the path is cleared. So I got super lucky today. Again, I think luck has got nothing to do with it. Nobody gets lucky by winning the most, the premier series in the country and then getting a 10 second gap. Marius, do you think this was any luck involved? Here? No, listen, I mean, I, I, know, I know what you're saying, Zara. I mean, I said in commentary on your closing on the final lap that, you know, you wanted a, a turn one to survive, which you did. But it did. I mean, that certainly gave you the gap, which which was pressure off. But uh, I just think it's a very, very difficult track to to actually stay on a consistent pace. And that's what Bash was saying was hard for him. He was like within a second on his lap times. You weren't. And I think that's what's critical here. If you can be consistent at Monza, it's very, very hard for the guys to to catch you. And, and that's why you were 10 seconds ahead. Brilliant drive again. Um, yeah, no lady luck here. Class. I don't know. I'm just, I'm shocked. But I, the first corner, I, I think uh, I couldn't see exactly what happened. It looked like Jason was really steaming in there quite hot. And I think he just backed off going into the second part. So it was yeah. unlucky because Jordan was was right there. Uh, see what he, he tried to go around the outside. So obviously for the left-hander uh, on, on the first chicane, he's obviously going to be compromised. So he, he just it stopped his car a little bit more than Jordan was expecting. But Jordan yeah. then made contact with him as he was exiting coming on the power on the rear of the bumper so just spun his car around completely so yeah it was one of those one of those tricky things but that's what happens at turn one because you've got such a concertina effect but for you that was critical if you can literally just survive turn one and that's where you want to be qualifying here at monza on pole is so critical yeah, yeah so i mean i feel bad for jordan because i think he wasn't expecting uh jason to slow up like that so mm -hmm. i think it, we would have had a really good race with jordan so uh, I just feel like it's a pity. Like I was, I was <laughs> waiting for such a battle, and uh, Porsche a bit down on speed, and I was ready. I was going in guns blazing, and then all of a sudden, I was nearly. 
going. I was like, oh, no, that's it. That's it. Race over. Now I was so grumpy because I know that from, I mean, I said, you, you're going to be stoked because you, you've got exactly what you wanted. But I also know you're a racer. Uh, and for us, we ended up losing two cars in that battle. Mm. East because yeah. of Gordon with the drive through and obviously spun Jason way back. So, yeah, it's cool to hear you say that as well because, yeah, you want to win. But I know you are, you want to win going door to door. And that's why you were so stoked with third at Zunfurt because you're a fighter, you're a racer. Yeah, so I, I can't help but feel a bit disappointed in the way the race turned out, but a uh, win is a win, so I'll take it. Yeah, and I'm sure you will with 45 points in the bag. This puts you in a very, very advantageous position in the championship. Start to eke out that gap here. Tell me a bit about your experience of the car on this track. We've heard from all of the guys that Porsche is a bit of a handful around here, even from Bashir. How did you manage to get the setup so dialed in, or did you get the setup dialed in, or was it just a case of head down, pump those laps up? Yeah, so there's a couple of corners where the, the Porsche is really bad uh, over the curb, especially Ascari. Mm -hmm. So it was just about focusing on trying to get the setup to be stable there. And uh, it was a bit of a compromise throughout the rest of the track, but as long as you can survive the race, that was uh, number one. So uh, yeah, it was a bit of a safe setup, uh, but uh, in the end, it uh, paid off. Yeah, well, safe or not, you certainly got that win and a well-deserved win for you, Zaire Essa. Um, congratulations, man. Class, class driving. You did it. You called it. You survived the first corner, went on to win the race, a flag to flag. Congratulations, man. A well-deserved win for you today. Thank you. Well, next week, we've got the Nürburgring and uh, another iconic circuit on the calendar round six happening next week and that takes us to the halfway mark of this championship audience what are your thoughts going into round six number one don't freak everyone out it's not next week we've got so a week two weeks time two weeks time i apologize <laughs> i'm just excited okay i'm excited <laughs> yeah. Listen, before, i just i just picked up on the, on the chat now the fastest lap was uh bashir uh, of a 148.2 i mean i guess he'd be loving them to implement you know, extra points for fastest laps in races because that'll also throw another little spanner into the works. But oh. just, he was saying, like, remember he said he, he was just inconsistent. So he was super fast or he'd be a second off that pace. But anyway, still a good result. <laughs> Listen, Nürburgring, I absolutely flip in love. I've, I've been lucky enough lucky enough to drive a Neutschleifer and, and mm. that included obviously doing a, doing a part of, of the Nürburgring lap as well. Unbelievable circuit. Um, a, a track that a lot of people test at. Uh, so the Audis are going to be super, super strong here, I think, uh, and so all the Porsches. But it's a it's a proper driver circuit. This. So it's not what we saw here, where it's all about horsepower. Yeah, you've got to have your car really well set up to be able to handle a couple of really fast corners, and also some corners that are going to stop the car and, and involve getting uh, good traction out of them. So it's going to be an interesting race for me in two weeks' time. I love the circuit; it's great. Very interesting indeed because we're going to a setup that now is completely different from the previous one. We've seen it before where the circuits have been similar one to the next, but this is a whole other kettle of fish. And a whole other kettle of fish is what we saw today with that first corner incident and some of the guys just absolutely jumbling up the order this week. What an exciting race weekend that we've had so far and of course this could not have been made possible without our partners Assetto Corsa Competizione, Kailami 9 Hour MSA and of course our sponsors that bring the technology to make this possible AMD, Elgato and of course Corsair. Whew, what a weekend from myself and the rest of the guys in the tower over here we'll see you guys in two weeks time for the next round of the ATK Pro Series at the Nürburgring. Goodbye.